Good afternoon, you fantastic bunch. I'm in a bit of a power happy mood today, so I thought I would do um, a little bit of a video showing you some of the stuff that I've discovered. Um, not 100% planned as usual, so we're just going to roll with the punches here. Um, yeah, let's see how it goes. Right, so today I want to talk about the new Admin Center preview. Now, this is pretty exciting because we're watching Microsoft move functionality slowly over from the classic view into the new uh, maker experience, as you will. So what I've done is I've gone into admin.powerapps.com and you can see I'm in my admin center and I've got access to the kind of core functionality around environments, data policies, integration, and kaboom, my tenant with my user licenses and quotas. Today, I'm not interested in that at all. What I'd like to look at today is a little bit more around the system settings that I can get access to from within the specific environments. So if I click on the environments and I go to, you can manage these settings in the Dynamics 365 Administration Center. Fantastic, that's exactly what I wanna do. So we can hit that button there. And normally in most circumstances, I would uh, hit that little button there, which I'm not gonna do today. Today, I'm gonna go try the new admin center. Right, excited. Boom, there we go. Roadside Assist, that's the one that I'm looking for. So you can see I've got my two environments here. I'll hit Roadside Assist. And what do we have here? Some information around the environment. There's the URL. And uh, what I'm going to do is, in the normal scenario, again, I would go into the classic view to manage my um, system settings. So there we go. There's my classic view. You should all recognize this over here. Administration, and there's some system settings over there. I've got access to my business management over there. What I'm going to do this time, though, is I'm going to say we're going to click on settings at the very top left over here. Now, it's interesting because I hadn't initially noticed that until, um, you know, randomly I decided, hey, what does that do? Click. Wow. Cool. OK, we've got a different menu structure here. We've got some different information available to me. What can I get from this? What can I do that I can't do here? That was the first thing that I thought. Now, in a in a fit of uh, a fit of panic and excitement, I decided that I would go through each one. And uh, what I'll be doing is transferring this to a blog post, but I built out um, sort of where every one of these menu items maps to based on the classic interface. Very diligent, I know. I will high five myself. Boom. There we are. So you can see that I've got some basic mapping done. Um, it tells you sort of where everything goes, what it does. I've even left some notes, again, very diligent. And hopefully this will help you out. So check out the blog post if you need more info. I'll only be delving into some of the areas in this video, um, some of the more interesting parts that I found. Okay, so without further ado, uh, I'll probably close that for now. And let's pop back in here. So you can see that the admin area is kind of split into six, six sections, which is pretty cool. Um, your typical email services data management. Uh, these you'll recognize from the the uh, system settings or admin console, and then product, business, and user permissions. Well, those two are slightly new-ish. They don't mean what you think they mean. And then users and business and permissions mean exactly what you think they mean. So let's start off with the ones that make the most sense. So if you were to go to users and permissions, that's the one that's primary around the admin piece. So let's go to a classic view. We'll hit uh, security. You can see you've got your menu items over here. If I click on this view, you can also see that I've got my menu items there. So let's just pick one because the mapping is pretty straightforward. So we'll click users over there. Magic, you can see I've got my list of users. When I click users over here, it's as if there is sorcery going on. There is a list of users there. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, we're not going to dive into that section too much more because it's, uh, it is as it says. Let's take another look at another section where we've got a, I'm not even going to go into the social engagement piece. It does exactly what it says. Let's go for data management because now it starts getting a little bit more tricky. So data management, uh, data maps, imports, uh, duplicate detection, encryption templates are all within your data mapping functionality over here. Or data management. So that's all there. They root to the same place. They do exactly the same thing. Wow. Let's take a look at a different one. Let's take a look at announcements that's under data management. So you don't see that available over there. However, when I go to administration, you can see announcements over there. So some of the stuff has moved around slightly, which is not a bad thing. Um, makes sense, I guess. Auto numbering. This is a very interesting one. If I click on auto numbering under data management, 
So we'll click that over there. You get this. Now, I'm going to pause real quick. What's very important to note about this environment is that I have no Dynamics 365 first party applications loaded in here. As evidence, if I open up the classic view once again, and I go to settings, and let's take a look at solutions, nothing. There are no first party applications loaded in here. When I say first party applications, I do mean Dynamics 365 for marketing, sales, customer service, PSA, or field service. All right, so there are no first party applications loaded in here. The interesting part is that because of that, there is no reason for me to view all of the auto number functionality for things like cases or contracts. So unfortunately, I won't have access to that. However, this does mean or look like there's some sort of a placeholder here that Microsoft would potentially be using in the future to add, I don't know, let's say another set of autom automated um, number, uh, automate, uh, sorry, auto numbering functionality. I know it's available within the SDK. There's just no UI. Um, the example I'd like to give you very quickly is when I open up, let's pick a version with a first party application. So we'll click on that over there. Open all the things. There we go. So you can see I've got loads of first party applications in here. There's PSA, field service. Let's pop into admin. You can see I've got auto numbering and there we go. So it's quite obvious that that functionality has been populated. Anywho, back to the, uh, the discussion slash demo. So that's a couple of interesting ones. Um, let's take a look at your business information. Now, I kind of realize I'm going backwards. I jump around a lot, but it's fun and it keeps you on your toes, right? So a couple of interesting ones that I noticed when I go to business closures within business. Unfortunately, this brings up a blank screen. Now, that probably means that again, it's a filler, but it, and only I'm demoing from a UK region environment. It might be different um, for other regions because as you know, they're being updated very quickly all the time. Similarly with currencies, I have the same type of thing. However, let's go to calendar. Calendar, we get to fiscal year settings. Another interesting one. So when I've decided to um, take a look at an environment with a uh, first party set of first party applications loaded in, and you go to business management, you have fiscal year settings. However, when I move off into an environment without any of the first party applications, I don't have that available to me. Which means that again, Microsoft will most likely be moving the functionality over at a point in time. Same sort of thing with regional formatting. Now this is an interesting one. When I clicked on regional formatting, I had the whole system settings menu available to me. So again, Microsoft is probably going to whittle that down into something that makes a bit more sense. You need to remember that this is a preview, right? So Microsoft will be moving functionality over as they go. I'm really excited about where this is already. The final one I'd like to take a very quick look at is going to be the product. Now, this is the one that I found very, very interesting because I, I, I find myself jumping around a little bit between the different menu items available to me in the old UI. So let's take a look at the ones that are quite basic, right? So languages divert you directly to languages, which makes sense. There you go, same as in within the old UI. When I take a look at behavior, this one was interesting because they seem to have sort of consolidated some information from the system settings menu. If I take a look at my presentation that I have open over here, I've actually listed where things can be found. So they've got some information from the system settings, they've got some information from the customization, I've highlighted some of these in blue because this actually wasn't available to me within the older UI. Another great one to look at is going to be the features menu. Again, the same type of thing where a lot of this is available within the general tab under system settings. However, things like your Power BI visualization is available under the reporting tab. Let's take a look at email very quickly. So mailboxes and server profiles speak for themselves. Pretty much you can gain access to those directly through the same route within the old UI. Email, so you've got your email settings and email tracking. They've split the general tab up for email. So if I were to take a look at administration, system settings, you can see email over here. There's quite a number of options. This has been split between these two over here where you've got email settings and email tracking. So it makes it a little easier to navigate. So that's a really basic view of what's available in the admin center preview. 
please remember that this is again a preview, right? So not everything's gonna be there. Microsoft will be moving functionality over slowly. The thing that I really love about this though is it was a lot easier to navigate and I found it a lot more user friendly and actually faster than the previous user interface. Yes, we all love the old UI, but I'm thinking, you know, from an administration perspective, it's all moving over here. And for me, it makes a hell of a lot more sense to be used, utilizing things here. So I'm going to start getting used to using this type of functionality and hopefully Microsoft update this when they can. They will update this when they can. And um, if I get the time, I'll try and do another video showing more and more of the functionality that's come out of this. But I'm really excited to see, you know, it, it seems to be a lot easier again to navigate and to utilize. So great job, Microsoft. Um, really excited for this. I will keep on trying and um, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. Ciao.